السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله صلى الله عليه وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه بارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد um, we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for making it easy for us um, to inshallah be discussing with you and uh, sharing some lights with what's happening across the globe and subhanallah as Muslims we believe that every day that elapses draws us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yesterday brought us closer to Allah and today more closer next year and the year after. And when we speak about the signs that Allah has made for human beings to realize regarding the elapse of time, these signs are so many in our lives. Subhanallah, if I ask you, how many people have you heard that have passed on? When you hear of someone passing on, do you consider that to be something normal? Uh, everyone has to die, yes. But subhanAllah, all those people that are passing on and that we are burying, they are not going somewhere where they will return. They're going to an eternal life. So I know some people that take this subject very lightly. Uh, the signs of Qiyamah, uh, the minor signs or major signs that the Prophet Sallallahu has prophesied because we know uh, some people are, you know, Quranists. They only believe in the Quran and whatever the Sunnah has given them, they turn a blind eye to it. But SubhanAllah, you will see that what the Prophet ﷺ has prophesied, it's really taking place. Whether there are minor signs or major. And today the world is surprised, is in a big shock, seeing a sign of Qiyamah, uh, you know, proving itself in 2021. So we know that the global warming and climate change is a big escape for many you know things so everything that happens in our lives when there is a climate you know when there is a natural phenomenon or there is a natural disaster the first blame we put on climate change but i don't think that all the natural disasters are because of climate change some of these things happen because of divine intervention, because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's see what's happening in Syria. And that is a sign of Qiyamah. When was this discovered? It has been discovered in 2021, in this year. Is it something that the Prophet ﷺ has prophesied? Yes, and we're going to share that. Let's just see what's happening in Syria water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. Israel and Jordan have been engaging in drought diplomacy over scarce water resources, while Kuwait is converting the world's largest tire dump into a city. The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria for thousands of years. But now it has sunk to a historic low, sparking the region's worst water crisis in years. Our next report tells you more. The mighty Euphrates River used to near Haled al Hamis's farm. But now the river is only visible from a distance. The crops have been destroyed due to the lack of irrigation. Even worse, the farmer's family has been left without drinking water. So, um, before we continue with that, we have seen this news, which is a bit devastating for our people in Syria, and that is regarding um, the river Euphrates drying up. Drying up of river. This is not an ordinary river, my brothers and sisters. This is a huge river. It's one of the largest river in the entire Asian con in, in, continent. 
it runs, it originates from Turkey, and then it runs through Iraq, and it goes all the way to Syria. Now, we've seen this river drying up, as you have seen um, in the news uh, recently. Why is this river drying up, or global climate change and global warming? No, no. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has prophesied in an authentic narration. And the hadith appears both in Bukhari and Muslim. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? لا تقوم الساعة حتى يحصر الفرات عن جبل من ذهب يقتطل عليه that Qiyamah will not take place until this Euphrates river dries up. And when this river dries up, what will happen? Then people will discover gold. They will discover mines. Yes, mines, gold mines will be discovered under river Euphrates. And imagine this is not a small portion of gold this is gold extending through uh, this continent from Turkey, Iraq up to Syria, full, full of you know, full of gold. And you know today how the world, how greedy the world is. Brothers and brothers cannot see eye to eye because of a dollar. Sister and sister fighting, the in-laws, the outlaws, whatever you call them, not you know, having mutual understanding in the family because of money. Money is a source of fitna. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهْوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ That beautified for men, beautified for men as a form of fitna. It's زُيِّنَ لِحُبُّ الشَّهْوَاتِ Love of, of desires مِنَ النِّسَاءِ You know, starting from spouses and children having, you know, Allah gives you a son, I want a daughter, a daughter, I want a son. This also is a trial. مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that another trial for human being is abundant wealth. Wealth is a fitna. Wealth is a fitna. And this is one of the core problems in our lives. When we attach our values to money, to materialism, that's where you see problems amongst people. We have seen other people invading others because of money. Right? Africa was invaded. So many countries were invaded because of financial benefit. So just imagine people that go and invade others because of financial benefit. What would they do if they see a huge stretch of a mountain of gold? So an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when Euphrates river dries up, don't only worry about lack of, uh, uh, you know, water sanitation, lack of pure water. No, there is another worry that you have to worry about. What is it? That's the uh, nearness of judgment day. Because alayhi salam, when he prophesies, it has to happen. What the Prophet ﷺ has prophesied and have not occurred is about to occur. But most of the minor sins, we have seen them with our naked eyes. Jibra'il ﷺ comes to the Messenger وسلم, and Sahaba describes him the hadith that have taken momentum amongst the reporters of hadith. Bukhari, Muslim, Ashab sunan Hadith Jibreel, the hadith of Jibra'il ﷺ. And he is seen in a form of a human being. And he poses the question to the Prophet وسلم, And he says, Akhbirni anisa'a, O Messenger, tell me what is Qiyamah? When is it going to occur? Can any person predict when Qiyamah will occur? No. Jibra'il salam poses this question not because he wants an answer from the Messenger وسلم. Hadith is Ashab sunan it's not a Bukhari Muslim, but is reported by Ashab sunan Right, his purpose of the questioning was to educate you and me that don't take qiyamah lightly. So the Prophet ﷺ responds to him and he says, Mal anha bi min as -sail. The questioner, the one that is questioned, is probably have a clue. He can probably, uh, he knows the signs of qiyamah. And he says, okay, share the signs. 
What are the signs that will occur before Qiyamah? Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam starts speaking about major signs of Qiyamah. Nuzul Isa bin Maryam Alayhi Salam. The return of Isa Alayhi Salam. It hasn't happened yet. It's about to happen. Can you and I doubt? No. Why can we not doubt? Doubt because it was prophesied by the most truthful person that have ever walked on the surface of the earth. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what he has prophesied 1400 years ago from the minor signs of judgment day and also of those of major signs, we are going to see them. The difference is how do we view and see these minor signs of Qiyamah? When we see them, do we have a fright? Do we have a you know, a point of reflection, do we reflect and realize that this world is coming to an end? The world that we are fighting for, the world that we are dying for will come to an end. Ask a mathematician, ask any mathematician, and I'm calling upon all the scientists that deny judgment day. Go up counting, you'll come to thousands and then millions, trillions. Where will you go after that? No. So the number will come to an end. You will have to stop somewhere. Even when you count back, you'll count back and you'll come to nine, 10, eight, seven. You count, count down, you know, then you, you will have to stop somewhere. You'll have at the zero, I stop there. You're gonna go minus zero. You'll have to stop somewhere. The same thing, this world will come to an end. Let's not get carried away with the glitter and glamour of this world. Don't get carried away with the comfort zones that we have. Allah has showed us the sign of Qiyamah, the Euphrates River from Syria, Iraq, and up to Turkey drying is a sign of Qiyamah. What will happen next in Nabi of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that when this river will dry up, it will turn into a gold, a river of gold, only gold, and the place where it was covered by water. Then human beings, there will come people fighting to discover these gold mines. 99 from 100 people, 99 out of the 100 people will die as they get closer. And they'll start fighting. Let it be mine. Let it be mine. I want to have possession. No, 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 no. I have more entitlement. And they will start fighting. Right. You can, I don't know if you want to interpret it into a last world war. No, but this will be a war between uh, money mongers. People that are just after money. They kill others for money. They will fight over uh, Euphrates River, fighting for that gold. 99% of them will die. From those 99, as they get closer, as they get closer to this mountain of gold at Euphrates River, each one of them will say, I will probably be the one that will be saved from this uh, death and can have the full control over this gold, subhanallah. And then the Prophet says, You shall yusar al farrat and kanzim min al dab. Faman hadarahu fala yaakhud minhu shay'a muttafaqun alayhi. The Prophet gives us a very good warning. Very good warning for you and me. Muslim, are you listening? What will you do if you are closer to this place and you are seeing this mountain of gold? And you're seeing people getting closer. Are you going to join those groups? The Prophet ﷺ says that whoever is alive at that time, if I'm alive of, or you are alive at that time, whether where this gold exposes itself, whether where this gold is now discovered, do not get closer to it. Don't even come nearer. Don't come nearer. Stay away. It's a fitna. It is a fitna. Stay away. Wasn't money a fitna for Qarun? It was. 
Yes. So alayhi salam says that if you happen to be alive at the time and you have, uh, you are in a close pro proximity, proximity, you're in a close proximity to Uthras River where you can get a portion of this. Do not, فَلَا يَأْخُذُ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Do not take anything. Go away. Subhanallah. Signs of Qiyamah. It's a reminder for a believer. How many signs of Qiyamah are we seeing in our lives? And we still continue disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking a question. فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَهُ what are the people waiting for? What am I waiting for? What are you waiting for to make a change in your life? Are we waiting for judgment to take place? Which will come to, to be people in a split of a second, in a sudden. You know, the other day we had an earthquake. We had an earthquake. How did that earthquake happen? It happened in a sudden. No anticipation whatsoever. No one anticipated that earthquake. And how many countries, the earthquake in Japan, the earthquake in Nepal, uh, in Kathmandu, I know many of you love where in Kathmandu, I'm one of them. Do you know there was a huge explosion of earthquake there a few years back? SubhanAllah. And that earthquake was about 8.5 magnitude. Our earthquake here, was very closer to that magnitude. Don't forget. Did we take any heed? Here is another sign of Qiyamah. We have discussed previously that the frequency of earthquakes is a sign of judgment day. But here is another sign of judge judgment day prevailing itself in 2021. Wallah, it's a shame on that individual. It's a shame upon me and a shame upon everyone that sees these signs of Qiyamah happening, proving themselves and prevailing themselves in our eyes and we do not make a change. Are we waiting for the actual judgment day? Are we waiting for Isa salam to come back? Are we waiting for the sun to rise, to rise from the opposite direction? That's a time that no one can make, can make any reformation. Once the sun rises from the opposite direction, the doors of Tawbah will be, will be shut. This is the time. Make some time, inshallah, reflect on this. Don't be amongst those people that say that, no, 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 I will change. It's not time yet. Now, this is just a global warming. How can it be a global warming when the salam has prophesied? And I was very shocked to see that the same is also mentioned in the Bible. If you want references, I can, I can give you references. If you're looking for those references, I'll give you references. This river that have dried up. Let's just watch that again, just for one more time, inshallah. Completely deprived of drinking water. The women have to walk seven kilometers just to get a bucket of water for their children to drink. Al Hamid is among millions of Syrians who depend on West Asia's longest river, Euphrates. Water levels in the river have hit record lows. Neighboring Iraq has also been affected. Both Iraq and Syria have been dry countries. Despite this, the current drought is unprecedented. Rainfall has declined by 70%. Environmentalists are calling it the region's worst water crisis in years. 12 million uh, people in Syria and Iraq are struggling with this, uh, the worst uh, water crisis in years that we have seen. So um, especially this is, you know, the, the water table is at its lowest, 70% less rainfall. And this has really wide ramifications for, uh, for health. Um, it has wide ramifications because drinking water isn't safe. The issue is not limited to drinking water shortage. Critical facilities like hospitals are at risk of facing power outages. This, as the drought is threatening to bring hydroelectric power plants to a halt.
Power shortages affect people's lives and forces them to use fuel oil. In addition, in the summer when it's hot, people need more electricity. With pumping stations and power generation stations out of service, hundreds of thousands of hectares of agricultural lands are affected, as well as the vegetable, maize and cotton seasons. And activists warn that the situation is likely to worsen due to a lack of water resource management in the war-torn countries. Bureau report, we on Wild is One. SubhanAllah, looking at those cracks, yes, on this river, from river to big cracks, what does that tell you? And can anyone doubt the prophecy of the Prophet wasallam? Can we doubt what the Prophet ﷺ has prophesied? No. Now is time that you become a day. Today, the world has changed. People have changed their, um, you know, their duties in life. What is our duty as human beings, as Muslims? Our duty is to invite towards the oneness of Allah, to invite towards Tawheed, but today people have changed. Instead of inviting others towards Tawheed, we're inviting others towards something else. We have become a fearful nation over a small creature of Allah, the virus that Allah has tested us with. People have become so fearful towards this uh, virus to an extent that we have forgotten our responsibilities. I want everyone, inshallah, including myself, become a da'i. Don't make da'wah towards only vaccination, only towards uh, one aspect of life. Let's become da'is towards saving this nation, not only from a global pandemic, but from a uh, eternal destruction, eternal doom of judgment day. When you start seeing the prophecies of the Prophet Sallam prevailing itself, why don't you become amongst the best? Who is there? Who is better in speech? Some of us, when we are arguing on social media, or is this, you know, is vaccination better than, you know, anti vaccine or being undecided or what? We are so argumentative. We can put our logic together. But when it comes to dawah, we don't see so many engagement on those dawah platforms than we do on these plat platforms and on these topics. Why don't we utilize? I'm not saying there's anything wrong doing that. No. But we have become so engrossed in inviting people towards one aspect of life. And we have turned away, almost neglected the responsibilities of Anbiya alayhi wasalam, use the same media to reach out to people, invite them towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what will bring rahmah. That is what will change the situation. That is what will save us, inshallah, when the day comes. Another question that I want us to reflect on. Are you happy with yourself? The way you're carrying on as a human being? Are you happy if Allah is to seize us now and, you know, bring us all to, to death? Are we happy? Are we ready to meet Allah? How is your relationship with others? How is your relationship with the Quran? How is your relationship? Uh, with your salah and the list goes on if there is any shortcomings when are you going to rectify these shortcomings another question if you have family members do you know it's your responsibility to reach out to your family members this sign of qiyama that is now been prevailed and been proven in 2021 you have seen it i have seen it our family members have, if they are not taking any positive steps in rectifying their lives, 
who's going to remind them? Not you, not me? Yes, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he universized his da'wah, before he proclaimed his da'wah to the public, who was the first people that he spoke to first? Who were the first people that he engaged with? Were his own close family members. Yes, today, mashallah, we speak big, including myself. But are we doing the same when it comes to our family members? There is a difference between the person that is trying and the person that says that, no, I, I can't be bothered. I don't want to be tramping on the toes. Yeah, my brother, my sister, take this advantage. Take this short clip that I've shared now. Send it to your family members. Get that hadith that the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the river drying up as a sign of Qiyamah. Take it and then share it with your family members. And subhanAllah, you, you probably can relate better to them than anyone else because blood is thicker than water. Finally, I want to end with this uh, words, inshallah. Like everyone is picking up. We're seeing the anti-vaccine going viral, going very loud. On the same note, we are seeing the pro-vaccines going very loud and almost we're seeing in our communities, almost kind of, uh, you know, collusion, people colliding on these, on, on these topics. Uh, when you call someone, the first thing before they can ask you how you are, how are you doing, how is everything? The first question is, have you taken the vaccine? Okay. Now, we have done that enough. We have done that enough. But now that we have another sign of Qiyamah, is it not enough for us to change our topics? Start talking about more realistic things? Oh, what have you done today to get closer to Allah? If you know someone that is not waking up for Fajr, give them a call. Oh, uh, bro, set up a few alarm clocks. Uh, sister and all those, you know, be uh, supportive towards one another. Okay? These tests in life will be there and they will always come. But let's not get diverted away. I am thinking, why? An earthquake in the midst of a global pandemic. I've been thinking. I've been contemplating. Why this river drying up in the year 2021? Yes, there were some reports from 1990. The you know, tide, the tide of the river was decreasing from 1991. But now, why in 2021 that this river is now drying up and we're seeing big cracks? I think that is a reminder. It's a reminder, this earthquake and the cracking of this river in 2021, it's a reminder that human beings, you have focused so much on this minute virus that I have given you as a test and you are forgetting your obligation in life. Well, some people get that, you know, uh, it's just natural for people to be stressed up, but the stress should not be taking you away from your obligation. Understand that. If the stress and the lockdowns is taking you away from the obligation, your obligation of da'wah, your obligation of worshipping Allah, then understand that that's a, that's a sign of failure. That's a big sign of failure. Let's rejuvenate and revive our hearts, insha'Allah, our spiritual hearts, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it such that the day that this world comes to an end, we, insha'Allah, leave this world in the manner that Allah is happy with us. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to seize the nation, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us away in a state of belief, in a state of Iman. Ameen. Until tomorrow where we're going to be discussing a very important program and we're going to be hosting 
one of our um, uh, you know, friends that have experienced the COVID-19 and is going to be sharing some successful stories on how he has survived that's happening tomorrow. SubhanAllah. It's very interesting, brothers. Come, join. You don't have to come here physically. Join. Tomorrow, the link has already been shared where we're going to be talking to a first-hand experienced person who was struck with severe symptoms of COVID-19. And alhamdulillah, he survived. He has survived through prophetic medicine. It's happening tomorrow. We're not saying it's a cure. We're saying prophetic remedy. Inshallah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.